Hi everyone, welcome. Today's check-in is with one of my older systems. It's the the bin of mixed red worms. And these little guys have been in service now for 257 days in this tub right here. Mixed red worms are red wigglers, European night crawlers, and Indian blue worms. This is an interesting system because we created their environment using twine and over the beginning um, earlier stages of the system's lifespan we did complement the twine bedding with some paper products and leaves and things like that however more recently for the past 71 days we set this system up to be foraging and when I refer to foraging it usually just means no new bedding however with a lot of twine still remaining in this system we've just been making use of the existing material in there the twine as the bedding so it's kind of um kind of like we're cheating a little bit <laughs> not really but they're the ones that I'm going to be getting up on the bench today I got a nice assortment of stuff from my freezer for them so let me get a glove on get the worm bin up on the bench and we'll get to feeding them the majority of the stuff in here is banana peels of which there are a couple there's the peels of cucumber in here and green beans as well as a couple other odds and ends, perhaps the core of an apple, some apple peel. That might actually make up the extent of what we're giving them today. And there's also a nice amount of coffee here in this container. So let's, uh, let's get to feeding these little guys. Another thing I've been doing in a lot of my systems is using the mosquito dunks, which I used to create a solution of but more recently I've been putting into the little mini blender and breaking it up into this powdery substance and I'm starting to feel like whether I see the flying insects or not I'm going to be treating my systems with the mosquito dunks just as a preventative measure although in some of my systems I've definitely been seeing flying insects and usually I'll put this stuff in at the end I'm not sure if it makes much of a difference and this way we can consider this system as having been treated now the little handle on the cardboard cover was on this side and I believe that was the way we oriented it to indicate to ourselves that over here was where we fed because there's not a whole lot um, as far as evidence of where the last feeding occurred and one viewer did observe the way I left a piece of twine rope out here on the surface and there it is so even though I kind of um, didn't notice that I had done it I had actually left a little bit of a indicator to show where we last fed interesting how all the worm activity right above where we last fed um, resulted in all these castings um, getting piled up out here and to the degree where we couldn't even see this pretty good size piece of rope it was just surrounded by castings and it pretty much got buried which is pretty neat so let's check out how things in the feeding zone look I can already feel some hard objects there we go one of them is this pumpkin stem and as I recall there were two of them in here and maybe even a mango seed I believe so, you can already see some worms. I think, I think radish leaves were the main course last time. And I remember from skimming through the video from the last check-in 12 days ago, I made reference to the fact that radish leaves had been part of the previous feeding even before. So, uh, today we're breaking away from the routine for these little guys. Oops. Oh. <laughs> oh. I just got a little bit of the uh, worm castings in my hair. I don't think we're going to try that again today. I just can't seem to resist. When I see a mango seed, I never know for sure how long it's been in the bin. And eventually it'll soften up to the point where you can help it open up so the worms can have access to the seed that's inside because that's really just the husk of the seed right there. You don't really see the seed until you get inside the husk and there is a good many worms down here in this feeding zone and 
they're all tangled up within the lovely twine bedding that was rested below and then on top of the foods that we gave them. So the hope here is that they're actually working the twine down. You can see it now. It's, uh, it's no longer the thick stuff like this. And this might not even be the entire thickness, or is it? This might be the full size twine. So I think it's double wrapped, like you actually take apart one of the windings or one of the strands, the three strands that make up the full size piece, and then you can actually start unwinding that into three separate pieces. But then again, this might be just a component, one of the component strands of even a larger piece. Um, the original thickness of the twine. And there's a good bit of moisture in here. I could tell right away when I lifted the system up to bring it over here onto the bench how heavy it was. And, huh, interesting. There's even a couple grapes here from the last feeding. I kind of figured there'd be no sign of the grapes because it did seem to me like in past feedings where I've fed grapes, they vanish pretty quickly. Is that a grape or is that a tomato? It's probably a grape just has slightly different color to it. I don't know if that might have to do with perhaps the skin of the grape not being burst. So as far as the worms are concerned, they're just cruising right next to something and they can't really sense the juicy goodness of it. So maybe we'll have to burst those grapes to make sure that they're able to gain access to the inside of it and get the breakdown process started. Here's another one. I would have to guess that that's the case, but then again, this one over here definitely has a big opening on the side. So for whatever reason, these grapes just didn't seem to get the type of attention I was expecting them to get. I do recall feeding grapes in other systems, and they seem to go pretty quickly in those other past feedings with grapes, but I guess you don't always get the same exact stuff when you get grapes from one store or another or perhaps a different type of grape is delivered to the store than what was there previously so uh, maybe these just didn't really taste as good to them as the grapes I've used in the past which seem to just vanish very quickly so as you can see there's a good bit of twine remaining in this system that we can just continue using as bedding. In the past I would take any pieces of this stuff that I could find which was still clearly multiple strands wrapped together and then unwrap them to try to aerate the stuff so that you ended up with much thinner single strands or stuff that would almost get down to the individual fibers and to do that I would usually put on a second glove and even turn the camera off to give myself a little bit of time to do some of that in order to assemble a nice collection of bedding material that we could use to accompany the feeding. Today I think I'm going to skip doing that. It does feel to me like we've managed to break down the majority of the twine that's in here to those thinner strands. Although at some point in the future maybe we'll return to trying to collect up some of these larger pieces and unwind them. But I mean, you know, since I've already collected these things up, <laughs> even though I don't have a second glove on, I suppose we can make a little bit of an effort here to try unwinding some of these. But then again, doing it single-handed is something I've not yet tried. I even thought to myself, instead of putting a second glove on, why not just let my clean hand get a little bit dirty just for the sake of doing this? then I could run over to the sink, but I don't know, whatever. Maybe we'll just rip these few pieces that we set aside apart, at least to the point where we unwind one strand out of the three from the main material, hopefully loosening it all to the point where we're exposing a little bit more surface area to worm traffic than if we were to just leave it untouched. So yeah, here and there, it seems like we're still bumping into strands of material that can still be unwound but uh, I think what we're gonna do is we're just gonna proceed to 
pushing this material right back down onto this side of the bin that we've been feeding on over here and perhaps we'll just grab some of it so that we can pile in today's foods and the stuff is frozen solid I hope the worms don't mind me plopping in a bunch of frozen stuff amongst them I mean, look at all these worms it's a pretty crowded bin but you know I don't know perhaps I shouldn't have meddled with this stuff so much if we had just left it be the worms would have already retreated down into the material and then I wouldn't feel so bad dropping frozen stuff right on top of the worms yeah why don't we just give them a minute to retreat and then I'll be able to put their frozen foods right in there all right well you know I guess the other thing we could do is we could bring back some of these slow composting objects to further shield any worms that might be right below the surface and even this little assortment of twine that we attempted to unravel a little bit perhaps all these materials can serve as a little bit of a buffer a little bit of a shield so that we don't feel so bad dropping in these frozen objects right on top of where the worms just were and this is a pretty good size feeding luckily it seems like we've got ourselves a pretty good size worm population in here to contend with all that yummy food and even though I've got all that coffee in that box over there I'm questioning whether I want to uh, include it this to me seems like the stem of something which will probably just sit in here and not go very far so I'm going to exclude that maybe now that's a bean so I think we'll we'll just leave it at that that seems like a pretty generous feeding and hopefully they appreciate it and then we can start coming back in with some of this stuff you know and at this point I almost feel like the material over here where the top surface has been kind of depopulated with the worms trying to get out of the light if we were to roll this over a little bit here perhaps we can actually use some worm free material to rest right on top of the frozen stuff and then we don't have to feel so guilty that we're creating a terribly uncomfortable situation for these little wormies all right what a nice generous feeding we gave them now something we would do in past check-ins would be to actually skim through all this other material out here collecting up as much of the twine as we could and then unraveling it to use it as bedding in the feeding so I don't think we're gonna find a whole lot of twine throughout the rest of the bin but I figured we'd just do a quick aeration of the material quick basic inspection it's so so damp that I'm beginning to think that it might be time to retire our plastic covered cardboard and really see what we could do about driving this system towards a somewhat more manageable state without it being so darn sticky and muddy yeah you know I think I think that top cover that we removed in the beginning the cardboard that's got the plastic wrapping around it I'm looking over at it now and I don't see any worms on it which is a pretty good thing I'll take another closer look just to make sure I don't leave anyone stranded out there and I believe I'm gonna craft a newspaper replacement covering for this system because I would really like to see some of the moisture in here begin to exit the bin and by using a porous material like newspaper the the moisture in the system will have a chance to sneak out evaporate away hopefully resulting in a system that's not so muddy I mean look at this stuff sticking to my glove the way it is it's uh, it's gonna become a little bit unmanageable and I've already I've already got other systems where I've swapped out plastic covers and put paper in their place in those systems as well they were just starting to feel very very heavy so I think the system will benefit from uh, from being covered that way but I'm not prepared with a replacement top covering newspaper I'll craft one once I turn the camera off 
and oh, look at all this material I sent overboard when I was playing with that mango seed. All right, I better leave it. I'm smearing it all over my tablecloth. So I've got myself some homework. I got to create a top covering. I got to do some cleanup around here, putting stuff away, but I'm not going to keep you around for all that boring stuff. Really quick though, before I go, let me just say thank you. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, as always, please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go. That's always really appreciated. And if you haven't done so already, please also consider subscribing to the channel. That's very much appreciated as well. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Oh yeah, I got to check the top cover. Make sure I don't leave any worms stranded. All right, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye now.